the end is there. All right, Infinity War yeah, discussion okay. time, yo. Okay, it's been a while. We obviously have been holding out doing Infinity War for a good reason. Just. <laughs> All right, so <laughs> right. Snap. All right, so we were in Hawaii. Um, yes. Initially, we saw it. We loved it. Yes. Amaze balls. Just wow. Wow, wow, wow. Wow. Okay, yes. now right off the bat, Ian, does this film, Infinity War, Avengers Infinity War, does it hit your all time comic book film? Or does it just rank in the top five? That's a hard question. I mean, mm. the build up, the thing, I mean, it's, it's probably. For sure, top three. I gotta really sit down and think to go if it gets the number one spot. But it's top three for sure. And it's if the tenure anticipation for it just makes it like up there automatically. Right. And it, it's hard to say I have ten years of anticipation for it and it still live up for it. It still lives up to the hype, yo. Pinky finger. <laughs> um. Yes. So, I mean, after that long, 10 years, 18 films, bravissimo. That's all I can say to that. Yes. Oh, my goodness. Um, I know everyone has raved and talked about it um, time and time again. So, we'll get right into our quick review of it uh, and then go into a little bit detail. We'll do a little bit more at a different time on a different video. For you, though, what were the most compelling moments of Infinity War for you? Uh, a lot of times it was just the meetings. Because, like, if you think about, like, all these movies they have... Oh, the crossover moments. Yeah, the crossover where everyone's just meeting for the first time. Because, mm -hmm. I mean, think about it. You have 18 movies, and this is the first time some of these characters are actually meeting each other. Yep. You know, the first time, you know, Thor's running into someone. The first Guardians time... Guardians of the Galaxy. Guardians of the Galaxy, or Iron Man sees someone new. It's just like, oh... Doctor Strange. Yeah, it's like these first meetings that are, like... They have some humor in them because, like, I've never seen these people before. Even though there's that awesome exchange between yeah. Tony Stark and Doctor Strange about yes. ice cream. And, and, <laughs> and it's like they find ways, yeah, it's still <laughs> dire and they still throw in comedy for the right moments. And they keep that going throughout the movie, which is working in terms of having to beat. Like, who are you? Why are you here? What are you doing? And who's this guy? They do a really good job of that. Really, really done well. Um, now, what do you think this film could have done better? I know that's a, I know that's a tough question. Oh, to do tough better? Question. Um, I think the Thanos, the children of Thanos, could have been better. I agree. Like they were there, but I don't feel like any time except for one, none of them really pulls like seem like it pulls a real threat. They were kind of just there, and like, okay, we're fighting, but they didn't seem any different from the regular fighters, as opposed to one that actually seemed, hey, I'm way stronger than you guys. Screw you guys. <laughs> like, I can do what I want to. Right. But the rest of them kind of just felt on par with everyone else, and not really, like, they're, oh, they're really d difficult to beat. They didn't really give off that, like, they're children of Thanos. Yep. But I think it's hard to have them here with Thanos, and it's just, like, you got to get them out of the way to get the Thanos. Yeah, the, was it the Maw? Yeah. Yeah, the Maw is the only one that, uh, which is basically, he was kind of like like universal mystic wizard. I'm not yeah. sure exactly what he was as far as like his labeling, but I think that's the category I'm going to put him in just because he could rival Doctor Strange's powers. Um, he's the only one that legitimately posed a threat um, from what we saw, and he, he got taken out yeah. a la Aliens, which was awesome. Thanks for the pop culture reference, Spider-Man. Yes. Um, and then you have... Um, uh, was it Black Obsidian? Yeah. And um, interesting. I felt underused. Um, while he was strong and everything, his fight was kind of anticlimactic towards the end. So, yeah. um, he did pose a little bit of a threat. Although Spider Man was easily able to catch his like axe. Kind of weapon. Yeah, like his strength. Like he like, makes you look strong, but at the same time, Spider-Man like what? Yeah, like kind of like really easy. Kind of. But this is someone that 
in comic book wise, like he could, he's supposed to like be fighting the Hulk or something. And that's the thing too, because earlier on in the he'd be stronger because Hulk fights Thanos, and he's about to go step in with the Hulk. Yeah. And they told him, Nah, he got this. He's like, let him have his fun. Yeah. Um, the amount of people getting killed off. Gonna switch gears real quick, cause I. Oh wait, no, no, no okay, I'm sorry. Proxima Midnight, the female, yes. uh, one of the um, Thanos' children. Um, I don't know. She just kind of. Her CGI compared to everyone else was like off. Like the way her facial structures were, I, I guess they didn't work, seem to work on her as much or something to me, but she just seemed off a little bit. Sorry. Um, everyone else is kind of a little bit more polished. And the dude who kept stabbing Vision for crying out loud. Yeah. Oh my gosh. He was like his kryptonite for a while there. Just some of his blade. Yeah, he got stabbed him like twice. And, and then I didn't quite understand. They didn't really explain his weapon. Yeah, like what? Uh, like, like, like he would let him heal, but I'm like, that's still four phase. Yeah, but I'm like, it's still you can still use, and you really didn't really use it, but like once, and then you kind of just stopped. And I never understood he could have used his his power on them. He never. did once, and then dude like blocked it with his, and he split it with his, with his oh, uh, yeah, staff. Yeah. yeah. And then he never used it again. So it was kind of interesting. I didn't, I didn't really understand what happened in there but i think maybe the vision was just weak and it just kind of maybe weakened his systems yeah don't know so i think uh, it was just like okay you have another you know strong character you're like okay i can't have all of them in the fight so i got to right. kind of move them away because now it's... and then uh speaking of which captain america's intro into this film yeah. badass <laughs> badass you knew things were about to go down yeah. and go down wrong for these two, when Cap shows up with Black Widow and Falcon, yes, and they wreck shop, easily, easily. Mm-hmm. The little spirit, he was like, "Hold on, let me catch this real quick." He was like, "Just catch my." I felt like they should have been playing some Fifty Cent in the background. <laughs> I ain't a killer, but don't push me. <laughs> right? That's pretty much what Black Widow tells her. Like, we don't want to, but we, but will. we will. Sam was like, "We gonna get this." She was like, "You'll never get the chance again." Uh, Vanish. Kind of Wrong. <laughs> Wrong. Because <laughs> Scarlet Witch tosses up a case of ooh, and she gets but, mushed to bits. This part of the queen was like, what were you doing up there? <laughs> was she up there all the time? time. <laughs> she should be down here. She should be down here. Which, legit, <laughs> she has a very good point. You have one of the strongest people there. She could have. She probably could have took everyone out by herself. Yeah. Let's be honest, okay? Full power. Uh, Scarlet Witch is pretty much, she has w- reality warping skills that they yeah. just do not mention in this one. But they never, they or ever used. They haven't never right? used it, really. Yeah, they only do it, um, technically, so that's the crazy part, right? Her visions technically are realities that people can see. Yeah. Um, so that's why Hulk got spooked after the fact and why he ends up taking off and then you get Ragnarok. That version, that's why Tony was spooked for so long, because he actually got to see a glimpse into the future. If you recall, pretty much a lot of what he saw, um, also in um, that Avengers uh, Age of Ultron, those visions that, haha, visions that Thor Mm -hmm. sees, some of those scenes are actually in Infinity War. Um, We'll try to do a video on that later with some screenshots and all that good stuff. Um, So... I'm gonna give it a five. <laughs> I'm gonna give it a it's five. five. It's I'm five. gonna give it a five. It's a five. So we've we've only given two movies so far on our channel a five. Black Panther being the first one, and this one being the second one. It was a five, despite the small lows in this film. Easily a five. I mean, I walked in wondering, are they really gonna? Are they really gonna? Oh, I was expecting it. I was expecting it, but I was, I was like, expecting. It. I wasn't expecting. The level, I'm like, are they really going to go to the level that they need to go to? And they went there. And that's what made it a fire. I'm like, you really? Oh, snap. You really? Yeah. You really went there, yo. Now, I know some people uh, who I have talked to about this. I I am putting up Thanos' villain. The villain Thanos portrayed in this against Heath Ledger's Joker. I still say Joker. I, I give him the dark one. As far as an actual full range of performance, I give it to Thanos right now. I still give it to Joker. I, I, here's the thing. I walked away from Dark Knight like, dude, Joker killed that. 
Thanos did a great job, don't get me wrong, but I walked away from Dark Knight like Joker just he just killed that. Like that's you who can basically I don't think anybody can play Joker the same way ever again. Thanos, I mean it's it's a whole different type of like character. They didn't give a range of emotion and a range of like depth to this character and kind of why he is the way he is. But I didn't walk away like Thanos. It, it kind of was a star show, but at the same time, I don't feel like he stole the show. Because to me, my boy Thor stole the show. So, so the only reason why the only reason why I'm saying this is because Joker is not a character I would ever root for to win. Whereas Thanos, she little. I mean, he kind of had a point, but he didn't at the same time. If that makes any sense. Like, he felt like he was keeping balance to the universe. Well, so, I mean, yeah, it's a villain that, that makes sense. Where, right. Where it's like, you know, Joker he, has, is pure he has a reason. And where yeah. Joker has a reason of, I just want to watch everything burn and you guys deal so, with it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with, those are my top two movie villains for right now. I mean, uh, well, three. I mean, my, 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 my top movie villain is Vader. We're going to throw it out there. Oh, no, I'm talking about comic book. Comic book. Okay, real comic book. Comic, comic book. Comic book. Comic book. Comic book. Uh, comic book. Now, obviously, there are comics with Vader in it right now. Yeah. And there were shortly <laughs> after the film, but there yeah. were not prior. So we're doing that for right now. All respects to Vader. All respects to Vader. <laughs> uh, so comic book movie, comic book movie villain. Uh, I'm going. Those are my those are my top two right now. Yes. Heath Ledger's Joker and Thanos. Although my top three, you have to exactly kill Killmonger. Killmonger. Boom. So um, <laughs> because I think Killmonger brings a level of like he was uh, right technically. <laughs> Which I feel like that was a setup for the audience to understand Thanos better right. in Infinity War. That that, that, Would you that, agree? that a villain can be right, yeah. but you don't agree about the methods. And then and then they do almost a similar style of villain in Infinity War, and then you're like, he could be right, but you could, could do it a different way. I mean, it's a messed up way to do it. And then I like how he has like his diplomacy, even for his own home world. You would do it randomly. You pick people that were yeah. you know like doesn't matter no, rich or poor. It's just no a discrimination, yeah. right? Which is different from the comic because in the comic he's literally called the Mad Titan because his yeah. ideas are so radical. He's like this, this, this. Everyone go, no, just, yeah. just kill him. And he was actually killing people to appease uh, Mistress Death because that's who he courts. He wants, she wants. He embraces death. Which I thought they were gonna bring death in when he goes to get the Soul Stone. And it they see very this, much seemed like he this, might have for a brief. He's about moment. to meet death, and I yeah. was like, oh, you didn't meet. Oh. Okay. Yeah. That's so just, that's not death, but okay. Did so it, it was interesting. Um, I do like um, the way they did this. Yeah. Considering they had their hands pretty much tied from the original story, um, as far as what characters they could bring in, what characters they couldn't, they did a very good job, in my personal opinion, uh, where the Hulk is crash landing into the uh, Sanctorium Sanctum in yes. New York that technically in the comic book is the Silver Surfer. Um, that's a callback to that. Yeah. Um, but they did it with Hulk instead, with Heimdall. Uh, people getting killed off in the beginning, they let you know they are not pulling any punches from the jump, yes. which I personally loved. I'm going to use the word loved. I loved the fact that they went, they, this went right at you from the jump yes. on this film. It was great. The from the jump. From the jump. jump. It, it was, was like, great. Hando, what? Loki? What? What and was the movie, yo? What's interesting, he said that they killed half of his Asgardians on the ship. So but, that lets you know that another half, maybe the Valkyrie chick. Because he wasn't there, yeah. Maybe and she got away. And then the two guys from uh, Rander Rock. Yep. Uh, uh, Cork. Cork, yeah. Yeah. And then I forget the bug's name, yeah. Meeks. Meeks, yeah. Yeah, Meeks. They, I believe those three got away. It very, very likely to presume. Uh, we'll probably see them maybe in the Four. fourth Avenger film. Uh, not guaranteed. The same. If he does, yes. you heard him first. Uh, <laughs> um, let's see. What else do we want to talk about? Anything else you want to talk about for now in Infinity War? Do we want to save that for our next um, like um, Easter egg type of thing. I talked about a few already. There's more references I could give you, but this video will turn well, into I mean, a very, very little Easter one. egg, but in terms of, you know, uh, we talk about Thor and just Thor and his whole quest for revenge and uh, going through. And, and I think that moment where they, they get your hopes up and they take it away, where he comes in and is just like, oh, snap, did Thor just do it? 
Oh, where's the guy? Oh, the wait. Wrecking shop. <laughs> and then you're like, did he just get the house? Oh. Wait, what? You should did what? What'd you say, Thanos? Should've. Should've, I should've done what? I should've went for your head? What just happened, yo? <laughs> and then um, a lot of people have the question. I'll, I'll just go ahead and answer it right away for you. If there's any question about this, um, is this all part of Doctor Strange Saw? Yes. Yes. So this is the one path that Doctor Strange saw out of the 14 okay. million. My thing with the Strange thing, and this is my theory. Mm -hmm. So all movie, the stone was here until he gave it to Thanos. Mm -hmm. So when he asked to go to Thanos, he saw a sudden just did this and just appeared. Right? My theory is he sent the stone back in the time. So it's personally my own opinion. We'll find out in a year. But I feel like he sent it back in the past. Huh. Okay. Interesting theory. I would like to get into that more with you, but I, I, I will leave that there. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm going to go with the theory that this is the one uh, path that Doctor Strange saw, and he helped make sure they were set on it. Um... There's a lot of moments in this film, to be honest with you. Uh, I'm still giving it a five, but just saying there's a lot of moments in this film where they could have, there's a lot of could have moments that they probably could have prevented Thanos from getting the stones. Star-Lord. Thank you. Damn, Star-Lord. <laughs> it's all Star-Lord's fault. It's all or, Star but where's, one thing that, too, that's going on, where's Drax? What do you mean? So when they're doing that, Drax is nowhere around. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think you got he got hit because he comes limping in like. No, right because he shoots the thing that gets his other arm. He shoots the other arm down and gets his arm stuck and then just disappears. No, Spider Man put the webbing on the other arm. Spider Man hit the gauntlet arm. No, Drax, isn't he, isn't Drax, he holding it? He he grabs the other arm and then he pull he's pulling it and then then Iron Man grabs it and then he goes and grabs it with Iron Man. So Drax, everyone pretty much lets Star Lord talk crap to him yeah, and Drax him and whatever. Does his little like bandit thing he did earlier with the other arm. Oh, that's right, that's right. And so he's like this, and then Drax just leaves until they get the gauntlet off. Wow, wow, wow. Also, Vision. We could have really we're talking about one or uh, an AI. Okay, you're not gonna. You're not going to destroy the stone because you want the rest of the universe to die? Well, that's not him. That's her. He wanted to, he wanted her to destroy it. But even Captain America wasn't on board. Now, you know if Cap looked at her and said, Scarlet Witch, you're going to kill this man. Scarlet's still like, you ain't going to tell me. She would have done it. He's like, you ain't going to tell me. I bet you she would have done it. Because Cap, Cap runs the show. She still would be like, make me. Cap runs the show. <laughs> make me. I'll make all y'all disappear right now. Just saying they probably could have done it. Um, but there's a lot of what if moments in, in Infinity War, but they don't, it doesn't happen. So, can't, can't really say, but they could have, but they didn't. Yes. So, you and know. Then, and then, you know, the mess up thing, they kind of released the fact that Groot's last words to Rocket was dead, you know. Oh. Heart, heart string tugger. <laughs> it's like, really? That's his, that's his life? Okay, you just gonna say Oh it. my gosh, it's Spider-Man. Yeah. To be honest with you, there's only two meaningful deaths in this whole film to me. You should know what number one is. Boy. And Peter Parker, yeah. your boy Spider-Man. Who, who's honestly... He's the only one who had screen time to really make you feel his death. Yeah. Black Panther just kind of vanishes in the midst of him trying to be the strong. Plane. Like you don't even see him vanish. Right? You see him grab and then his arm disappears. You're, you're kind of like, what the? F We're not gonna say you killed every black person that's in the movie, but you killed every Especially major black person first. You, you killed every major black person in the movie first. Just gonna say that. I'm not gonna say you guys did it, first. but you did. Hand out, Gamora. Oh, War Machine. The so only one because he's technically part of the original yeah. five kind of ish. So um, there's that. <laughs> technically, everyone that was in Phase One of, of the MCU yes. is alive still. If you look at it that way. Yeah, all um, Phase One. 
Yeah. Pretty much everyone was in phase yeah. one. Yeah. Phase one, MCU is alive still. Um, but Peter Parker, though, you felt for him. His spidey sense let him know, hey, man, something's I wrong. I don't want to go, Mr. Stark. Go. I'm afraid. I don't want to. I... Fades away. So, yeah, that one was, that one was, that was rough. Did you step Iron Man with the... Right, gripping at the, <laughs> gripping <laughs> at the, the dust. dust and it's like, like the oh. dust, and it's like, if his hand just disappears, and he's just like... I was, it was a tough scene. Yeah. But we made it through. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and, then, and it ends with Thanos like, <laughs> I did that. Smile. <laughs> Look at this beautiful planet right here. Oh, and that's the other thing too. So a lot of people are debating whether or not uh, what planet that is. I feel like it's on Gamora's planet. It's very likely Gamora's planet because he does mention it earlier in the film. Um, this is a paradise now. Oh, well, actually, me. that's his planet. Gamora's planet? No, uh, his own planet. No, his own planet was Titan. That's what oh, they started off for. Yeah, his own planet is Titan. I'm confusing the, the the reality gem that he uses on Doctor Strange to show him what it looked like, yeah. and then what it looks like now. Yes, I'm yeah, sorry. He's on so Titan. So he left be, Titan and he went to find the Morris planet. The Morris planet, where he technically started his whole thing for uh, the stones, or at least mentions it to her yeah. about it. So it's it's rumored that it could be that planet. It's rumored that it could just be some random uh, planet as well. Very likely it's Gamora's planet, though. Um, those questions, at the end of the day, you ask yourself, does it really matter? No. Yes, it does matter, because we want to know where it was. <laughs> so now do you think Nebula gets the gauntlet off, like in the comics? I don't think that's going to happen. I don't think that's going to happen. I mean, talking to some people, some people don't even realize that he, it, the gauntlet is still on his hand. Yeah. Some people told me, like, oh, the gauntlet vanished. It's like it turned. It burns. It burned. It's still, it's still there. there though. The stones are still there. It's still there. So basically, they're representing. Uh, unlike in the comics, in the comics, initially when this takes place, it doesn't really show that there's a wear on the gauntlet. Yeah. Um, except for later on down the road in some other comics, it does show it only has a certain amount of uses, and then the stones will scatter by themselves, a la Dragon Ball Z, um, <laughs> <laughs> or Dragon Ball. Um, but uh, in this one, in the in the film version, right, it shows that he's it, there was a strain on his arm, like even his left yeah, arm was kind of like just burned up. the whole like the yeah. side. I mean, if um, snap. You know, more scarred up than what it initially was, and there's some obviously wear and tear on the gauntlet. Um, but I guess he used it to heal himself because that chest wound was gone. Right. Um, <laughs> the other interesting thing, if you think about this, there's a. Smidge of a timeline difference between the, I believe it's the second Avengers film, where the gauntlet actually raises up and then he grabs it. Could that technically be the ending where this one actually picks right up and he's already been to the dwarf planet? But see, that's the problem with that. And then Ultron, when he grabs it, and then this one, because they said they, they built it for him there. Yes. So that's what I'm saying. Technically, is that timeline at the end of that credits is that technically just before this third Avenger film starts right it, it technically would have to be which is weird to they work. talk about the fact that they built it when you see it in the yeah, end of Thor's you see it in Thor in 4-1 the yeah. gauntlet's there but if you recall and then they say it's a fake yes Hell mentions then, that there are fakes but then it's already means there's a gauntlet already so why does he need to build one if there's already one? Dun, dun, dun. And then he grabs one, and then he needs another one. Plot hole. I mean, I think it's it's just a hard thing where you make all those movies, and you're not really thinking of the last one, right? You haven't wrote it yet. Which is interesting, though, because they did, they did pretty much close up a lot of loose ends, if not yeah. almost all of them. Yeah. So, did a really, really good well, job I mean, on that. It's easy to you know, get loose ends if you kill everybody off. Big time. <laughs> um, so, so that was done really, really well. Uh, like again, we could go on and on. I believe. I didn't realize um, how many characters it was until I actually had, like had the list of like everyone that got killed. Oh, I was right. like, damn, they killed everyone, yo. It's like it's like they killed it's a lot like of people. Sixteen, twelve, thirteen people. Like, what? it's a lot of people in the film. They can focus on less people now <laughs> in the next film. Very less. A lot less. <laughs> well, I think that that's what's going to happen. There is a time... St I, my theory, time stone, 
then they're going to try and get the other stones before Thanos. Interesting. I do not think that's what's going to happen. Um... <laughs> 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 My my my. Take if it happens, it, I'm gonna go back and I'm guarantee I'm gonna replay this and be like, I was right. All right, so we'll we'll leave Ian's uh, <laughs> prediction. Yes. Uh, I will not give mine currently. I do not, I don't think it's gonna. That I don't think that will be the case. I think it will be something else involved with possibly the soul gem. Say uh, it, yo! Don't be scared. I, I just did. Um, <laughs> so, some of the soul gem. So I, I, think it'll, I think it'll have to do with the soul gem. Um, and then the, the gauntlet in general, um, I don't think the time stone will be like the contributing factor. I don't think there'll be any time travel in this, but I think something with the soul gem, uh, I think all those people who vanished, uh, universally are probably all trapped in the soul gem. That I do think that they're trapped in the soul gem. So I'm going to go with that. I do think I'm going to go with that theory. That's why they think they vanished is because they just went to the soul gem. I'm gonna go with that theory. So but I still we'll, think they time traveled because he set the stone somewhere. He set so, the stone. He set the stone somewhere. So we'll we'll see what happens. Yes. We'll see what happens. Um, be very interesting though. Uh, once again, like, comment, subscribe. And again, sorry it took so long to put this one out. But like I said, we really want to give everyone a chance to see it out there. Yes. Uh, without talking about it too terribly much, we just wanted to talk about so much on this one. Great, great film. Captain Marvel's um, coming, yeah. Captain Marvel. Can't wait for some more. Ant and Wasp Man. Uh, Ant and the Wasp, Wasp Man is coming up. Wasp Man. Wasp Man. The, the Ant. <laughs> Ant Man and, Ant -Man Wasp. and the Wasp uh, is the next big Marvel one coming out. Yes. So can't wait to see that one. So again, like, comment, and subscribe. Share and, it, everybody. Uh, share it. Share it, everybody. Our work. Our work. To all of them. And we're out. Peace.